Hey everyone, Emily here and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making another recipe that I found on the internet. This one's from TikTok and if you're on there, I bet you've seen it. It's the viral upside down puff pastry. What you do is you just kind of build it backwards. Usually you start with your layer of pastry and then add on your toppings. We're going to do the opposite. Put your filling down first, your toppings down first, and then put on that layer of pastry. You pop it in the oven and flip it over once it's done to reveal your toppings. It looks like it comes out amazing every single time, and it also looks super easy. So let's give this a try and see how it turns out. I'm going to make two different types and I'm gonna start out with a very simple one. I'm gonna use pear and honey. This is a fantastic recipe to get really creative with. You could use whatever toppings you want. This one's super simple, so let's slice up these pears, and that's pretty much the only prep I have to do for my toppings for this one. I have my pears all sliced and now I'm ready to start putting everything on the baking sheet. We're going to start with a thin layer of honey where I'm going to place each pastry square. So I'm just doing small dollops of honey where I'm going to place all of my toppings. Make sure to space them out so when you place your pastry squares down, they don't run together when they bake. Now that we have our honey down, just give those a little spread. And on top of these, I'm going to layer my pear slices. Keep in mind, this is eventually going to be the top of your pastry square. So do this as neatly as possible and try and arrange them in a pretty way. Okay, I have all of my toppings down on the pan and I'm ready to get my puff pastry out. Now remember, this is a recipe where you definitely need to use parchment paper. This could easily stick to your tray even if you grease it, and you really shouldn't in this case. So line your baking sheet with parchment paper and you should be good to go, and they should flip over easily once they're baked. I'm gonna grab my puff pastry and we're gonna finish this tray up. Usually you can find puff pastry dough in the freezer section of your grocery store. I couldn't find it at mine today, so I grabbed a tube of crescent roll dough. This will work just fine, it's an easy substitute. So let's pop this open and get this topped up and ready for the oven. This always scares me. I'm just going to eyeball it and make some even squares across my crescent roll dough. You would do the same thing if you're using puff pastry dough. Then you just place these right over the top. We have our pastries all topped with the dough. Now the next step is an egg wash. This is an optional step, you don't have to do it, but it's just gonna give everything a really nice glossy coating when it comes out of the oven, so I think it's a worthwhile step, and it's super easy to do. Just crack one egg into a bowl. I like to thin it out just a little bit with water. And then beat that up with a fork. If you have a pastry brush, this is going to make the egg wash process quite a bit easier, but you can use your fingers, you can use a spoon, it really doesn't matter. Just get a nice, thin, even coating of that egg wash on each pastry square. I'm going to use a spoon, just put a little bit on there and use the back of the spoon to spread it out. This works just fine. And we'll repeat the process on each square. All right, these are ready for the oven. 
I'm going to pop these into a 400 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes. I'll check on them after 15. Once the top is nice and golden brown and everything is puffed up, you know that they're ready to come out of the oven. So let's get these in there and start working on our next tray. This is a great recipe to get creative with. I'm going to make my second one inspired by stuffed dates. So typically you see that with goat cheese and walnuts. I thought that would be a great combination with this and it'll add a little bit of sweetness with the dates. So this one's not overly sweet, a little bit more of a savory take. It'd be really fun to maybe do a pizza flavor of this. You can really make this however you want it. So let's get started with this one. I'm going to begin by slicing up a few pitted dates. I'm just going to find the seam where those were pitted and slice right along that and then just kind of spread the date out. I think one date, so two halves per pastry should be just perfect. Have our dates all prepped, so I'll push those off to the side and chop up a few walnuts. I have my ingredients all ready to go, so we're just gonna repeat the process and get these set on the baking sheet. I'm once again going to start with a little bit of honey. I think this is going to help hold everything together, especially the walnuts on top. So we'll do the same thing we did last time. When you're building these, think about the order that they're going to be in when you flip them back over. We want the cheese to be on the bottom, so we're gonna put that on last. Let's start off layering our dates onto the sheet. So I will do two dates, cut side down, or two halves, I should say. And then I'm going to top each one with a few pieces of chopped walnut. We have our walnuts and dates down, now onto our goat cheese. This is going to be the bottom layer closest to the pastry once it's flipped back over, so that'll melt right into the pastry. So I'm just going to do a few little dollops of goat cheese onto each one. These are already looking so good and I can smell the ones cooking in the oven. I think these are gonna turn out really amazing. So let's get these topped off with our pastry and our egg wash. We're just repeating the same process and by the time the other ones are coming out of the oven, these should be ready to go in. There are a few more toppings on each of these and I don't want them to be too bulky. So as I'm placing the puff pastry down or the crescent roll pastry down, I'm just giving each one a light press to kind of flatten out that goat cheese layer and push it into the pastry. Now onto the egg wash and these will be ready for the oven as soon as the other ones come out. These just came out and they are looking amazing. They have golden brown tops. I can smell that the honey is caramelized. I think they're gonna be really good. So I'm gonna set these aside to cool and we're going to pop these ones into the oven. My second tray is out of the oven. 15 minutes was a perfect baking time for both of these. Now they're all cooled off and it's time for the moment of truth. Will these flip over? They look amazing. So let's see how the bottom looks. Let's start with our pear and honey. I have a feeling these are gonna be super easy and they are. That looks so good. Have a nice caramelized layer of honey on there. The pear looks really tender. These would be so cute to put out for a party. You could cut these in half and do them like an appetizer. You could do these so many different ways. Now let's see about the stuffed date inspired ones, how these are going to come out because they're a little bit heftier than these ones, which are very simple. All right. Give that a flip. 
Not too bad, these look good. These look amazing. We have a really nice caramelized layer going on with the honey and the dates. The goat cheese has kind of melted into everything and I think the walnuts are going to add a really nice crunch. So I'm going to slice these up and see how they taste. I personally think this would be a really nice way to serve them, just kind of appetizer sized, make them a little bit easier to eat as well. Okay, let's give these a try. I'm gonna start with the pear and honey and see how that turned out. This came out amazing. Even without using regular pastry dough, this is super flaky and light. Really nice, simple toppings with this one. I do think it would be a lot better if you actually use pastry dough. Don't get me wrong, these are great just how they are. But I think the puff pastry dough would add just a little bit more of a crisp crunch to these. Otherwise, really good. Let's check out the stuffed date inspired one. That one is definitely my favorite. It's really good. Have the goat cheese in there. It's a little bit on the tart side. Mixes really well with the sweetness of the dates. Of course, this is a classic combination already. I would definitely make these again. They're good as they are with the crescent roll dough, but I would spend a little extra time finding that frozen puff pastry dough. I think it would just add a little extra crunch and crispiness and that flakiness that the puff pastry dough has that crescent roll dough just doesn't have. But overall, 10 out of 10, I would say this is a fantastic recipe. If you liked this recipe, check out my playlist of other viral recipes that I found on the internet. And if you have a suggestion for me, leave that in the comment box below. Make sure you hit subscribe so you can get notified every time I post, and you can always find the full recipe to anything I've made in the description box below, along with links to all of my social media pages and my Amazon page for all of my favorite cooking products. I hope to see you back here next time.